Hello, have you been uh, suffering from erectile dysfunction lately? Are you not satisfied with your sexual performance? Is this affecting you at a personal level and maybe even your couple? Have you been taking medication to help with your erectile problems? Or maybe even your urologist has offered you some advanced surgical techniques to help you with that? Maybe you don't really like that idea? Then stay tuned. We're going to be discussing about some hidden gems, some advanced interventional radiology technique that may help you in your erectile dysfunction and maybe even your urologist don't know. Hi, my name is, uh, my screen name is the AR artist. I am a vascular interventional radiologist and uh, today we're going to be uh, talking a little bit about what causes erectile dysfunction uh, and how an interventional radiology can help you without surgery. Thank you. So uh, before we dive into the topic, I just want to a little bit remind you and explain a little bit the anatomy of the, the penis. It's very important for us to understand how it works so we can understand how it can help you. So essentially, if you look on the top here, the, the penis is formed of uh, multiple different parts. So two different main different parts are called the, form the, you know, the, the erectile uh, system or apparatus. And these two bodies that we see here, we call them the corpus cavernosum. Just below, you have what we call the corpus spongiosum. Of course, everything is tightly packed and is surrounded by membranes that we call the uh, tunica albuginea. So basically, these membranes, they pack those, uh, you know, the corpus cavernosum. And we're gonna we're gonna see why uh, they are and, and what's their function because it's very important. Um, the tunic albuginia has two layers. The outer layer is longitudinal, the inner is circular. From the inner layer you see those uh, uh, extensions that go inside the corpus cavernosum to provide structure. So it's like a pillar of a house. So interestingly, the corpus cavernosum is called like that because it has what appears to be like caves, multiple caves inside of it. And this is very important. This is what gives the ability of this tissue to become erect. So erection happens not because this is like a muscle that becomes, that contracts, like reflects the muscles, etc. No, it's the opposite. The erection happens because the muscle relaxes. Yes, it's counterintuitive. It relaxes. It does not contract. If it doesn't relax, in fact, you have ED. That's the cause of erectile dysfunction. So when it relaxes, what happens really? What happens is this uh, caves, they will fill with blood, they will fill up with blood. So it's a hydraulic system rather than, you know, a purely muscular system. And then when it starts filling with blood, that what gives us a rigidity, okay? So the third, you know, there's another little body that's underneath the corpus cavernosum called the corpus spongiosum. Also it has like similar structure and inside of it you have the urethra this urethra is, uh, of course, obviously, this is what where men urinate from and also uh, ejaculate semen. So we already now understand that this is mainly something that depends a lot on blood. Inside the corpus cavernosum, you have two arteries. Okay, see them here. These are call them the cavernosal arteries. The blood is drained out of the, the penis through veins. They can be deep veins or superficial veins. So we're gonna see that a little bit in detail. So when they say that you have chemistry with someone, you really do have chemistry. And we're gonna see that this is like a chemical, a little bit briefly, what's the chemical basis of erection so we can understand how we can help. So, what happened when you are sexually aroused, when you look at something? I don't know what you're looking at that makes you sexually stimulated. So everything goes through the eyes, of course, travel to the brain, then down to the brain stem, the medulla, all the way to the nerves of the pelvis, and finally they reach very, very distal. This is what we call the neuromuscular junction between the nerves here and the smooth muscle cell that are located in the corpus cavernosum. So this is microscopy here, guys. So what we're we looking at. So basically, this mechanism is under the control of a gas. Yes, it's not nitric oxide. Nitric oxide will go inside the cell, will diffuse inside the, the muscular cell, will activate some 
chemical messengers that will decrease and the calcium and make sure that the smooth muscle will relax like we said it has to relax okay so when it relaxes then they have like influx of blood that makes the penis rigid and just this is uh, where drugs like for example viagra will act they will block this messenger at this level they block an enzyme so a and they prevent the relaxation and they um and they sorry this is where they they uh, they, they promote the relaxation of the, the smooth muscle it makes it easy for the the blood to stay in the penis all right so this is a, a another view of what happened so we just kind of uh recap what we've just been talking about this is a at the flaccid state this is a penis who is not erect we can see the corpus covered nosum they are empty the muscle is contracted there's not enough blood flow inside nice veins that you see here uh, that, are, uh, that carry blood away uh, so there's not enough blood basically here so what happened in the erect state the erect state we said that the, the smooth muscle will relax so this caused blood to fill these caves of the corpus cavernosum there's a lot of them so now we have a lot of blood that is coming so what happens this is great just it's amazing mechanism here as blood fills the penis becomes erect and more rigid so it starts now compressing those veins okay so when it compresses the veins there's no more leakage the blood stays in are you gonna tell me well <clears throat> how come uh, blood stops from coming in was well, simply it's a pressure mechanism once the pressure here exceeds the systolic blood pressure you know your arterial blood pressure simply there's no more blood that can come in and now we reach like a balanced state where there's rigidity of the penis and blood stays inside and you know it's interesting to know that at this stage there's the penis's reality is in ischemia so thank god it does not last forever otherwise we lose our penis what are the arteries that supply the the penis the arteries come from this artery within the pelvis called the internal iliac artery from the internal iliac artery arises a specific branch that goes to the penis called the internal pudendal artery the internal pudendal will travel down the floor of the pelvis to enter and finally provide uh, the uh, multiple branches um, that will travel inside the penis called the cavernosal artery or one that will travel at the surface called the the dorsal artery of the penis some of them will distribute to other structures like the spongiosum the urethra etc so for the purpose of erection uh, these arteries are for us the main important one okay the cover nozzle the spongiosal artery but mainly the cover nozzle so these are the important one that brings blood to uh, the uh, and, and control the erection mechanism the dorsal will mainly go to the, the skin of the surface uh, and, and the, the gland of the penis which is like a, the sensitive part of the penis you can see here the blood will return through these veins what about the venous drainage now what carries blood away are the veins so again multiple layers you have superficial vein deep veins small vein that make sure that everything can communicate together so blood has to come back to the heart and sometimes they they go they drain into the vein of the leg like here but mainly they go through the what we call the periprostatic the veins around the prostate and from there they travel into the vein of the pelvis and down to the vein the iliac system and then the major highway of the vein which is the inferior vena cava so now just to a little bit simplify in order to have an erection we need enough blood flow that comes in but also we need the blood to stay and does not escape so this is where interventional radiology can help it can help with people who don't have who have like arteries that are closed like for example diabetic or smokers etc or some people they can be healthy young etc but they simply for whatever reason uh, blood escapes their veins it's just like you have varicose veins in the leg or varicose seal in the testicle so this is a, again a problem that may affect the penis and we have an easy solution for that no need for surgery so <clears throat> quickly the pathophysiology is meaning like the uh, what are the causes of the disease so that it's a very complex topic erectile dysfunction it involves 
uh, neuropsychology, vascular, hormones, nerves, muscles, etc. So for us, interventional ideologists, we only work and can help you in a very, very narrow part of this problem, which is the vascular part. So after with patient comes into the office, you know, he has to undergo a comprehensive workout in a multidisciplinary team, virology, sometimes neurology, endocrinology, etc. So we want to make sure that he does not have problems with anxiety, depression, uh, the patient is not inhibited, uh, he does not have injuries, someone who has injuries to the spine cord, to the brain, or to the nerves, uh, is not going to be a candidate for our help. Similarly, patient on the extreme right of the, the slide who have endocrine issues, who have lack hormones, who are taking drugs, who have problem in their tissue of the penis like Pironi's disease, who are lacking hormones again, these are not candidates. So who are the candidates for us to help? Well, the are the, the candidates, the idea candidate is someone who has specifically a purely plumber problem. Like me, he has the pipes, has issues with his pipes, whether it's the arteries or the veins. So if it's arterial, well, well, how can we help? We can help by dilating those those arteries. We can put a small balloon. We can small like a stent, like what cardiologists do in the heart. If it's venous, then we can block those veins, we can put a little bit of glue, we can sclerose the vein and close them. Again, everything is done without surgery, everything using the interventional radiology technique, a pinhole in the local anesthesia. Uh, one specific subset is the patient who have trauma. They have either an accident, they fell on their penis, uh, they got hit in there, and then you know, but this is a little bit different. This is traumatic. Usually uh, it gives a condition called priapism or bleeding. Again, interventional radiology can definitely help with that. And uh, by either blocking the fistula or decreasing or even uh, curing the priapism. So these are the main uh, cause of the origin of vascular disease that may affect or give you erectile dysfunction. The first one is called uh, venous disease or arterial insufficiency. When it's venous or the problem is like a, it's it could be related to an incomplete relaxation of that smooth muscle, meaning there's not enough rigidity of the penis to compress those veins. If we come back here, if you don't have that rigidity that will compress the vein for whatever reason, then the blood will continue escaping through the veins. So even everything can be normal, the nerves, the brain, the hormones, the muscles. If you cannot keep that blood inside, you're leaking. It's just to have a leak, just like in a tire. So that will give you a flat tire. So you need to fix that leak. Uh, there are many causes, many uh, conditions or disease that may cause that, like uh, the injury of the tunica albuginea, which, uh, uh, you know, the tunica is what, uh, it's the, the covering of the penis. Uh, there's a problem with those smooth muscles not relaxing, there's disease that cause that. They have venous shunt where veins communicate abnormally with each other, or simply excessive adrenergic tone, meaning someone who is very, very anxious during the sexual act. He will not be able to, he will have ED mainly due to venous leakage. What about the arterial part? The arterial part is simply you're not having enough blood coming through the arteries. So you need to have the pump. You need to bring enough air to, to fill the tire. So if you don't have enough blood, you cannot inflate the tire. Sorry for this uh, analogy. So one of the conditions, condition that cause this uh, in compromised arterial flow is atherosclerosis. So it's just exactly the same mechanism that gives you stroke or that gives you heart attack. In fact, everything is linked and erectile dysfunction as we're gonna see afterwards can herald more different conditions to come. Microangiopathy is a little bit more tricky because this is seen in diabetic patient and uh, a little bit uh, more difficult to treat. Or you can have a patient who have an accident to have trauma. So this is how <coughs> we look at it again. Uh, corpus covered nosome. This is a normal flaccid penile anatomy. Uh, the corpus covered nosome are empty. The spodules are empty. Uh, the veins are nice and patent. Once they start filling with blood, the blood will increase pressure. It causes compression of the veins. So the blood stays in. So here you see I uh, can see it when you have a tunical degeneration, the tunica does not work, uh, cannot compress those veins, so you have a leakage. 
or you have you don't have enough uh, muscle smooth muscle cells if you don't have enough smooth muscle cells also you will have a problem of erection so the risk factors what are the risk factors for arterial problem the exactly same risk factors as you would have for a heart attack stroke or leg problem intermittent claudication the only difference here you can see is the size of the arteries the penile artery is one to two millimeter the coronary artery is three to four millimeters the carotid artery or the artery of the brain is four to five and finally the femoral artery is six to eight so <clears throat> someone who has arterial disease it will affect all his arteries the manifestation will be different depending on which arteries goes down first okay so someone who has a problem in his heart will have heart attack you all know someone who has a heart attack. Someone who has a problem in the carotid artery will have a stroke. Someone who has a problem in his leg will be amputated. So the, the problem is like ED happens before you have all these manifestations. So ED may act like a, a signal, an alarm, tell you, hey, you have an arterial problem. You have to take care of that. Otherwise, you'll be in much more serious condition down the line. So it's the same risk factor for the cardiovascular diseases, age, atherosclerosis, smoking, please both stop smoking, especially be careful with diabetic patients, they're particularly exposed to the disease and to microangiopathy because they will damage their endothelial, endothelial is the inner line of the, the blood vessels, those cells that are inside the blood vessel that die and then uh, at least stop smoking, guys, this is under your control. So how can IR help? Good news. And this is the hidden gem. This is what your probably your urologist does not know. Uh, or they may do it uh, himself, but surgically. How we are different interventional ideologies. So everything is done without surgery because we are expert in imaging. We can image, we use like high uh, tech equipment, radiology equipment. So at the basis, we're radiologists. So we can see inside the body without opening it. And we use everything through a tiny little, we use little pinhole and we enter a small tiny instrument inside the blood vessel to fix them. Uh, everything usually done under local anesthesia. So there's no need to, uh, you know, uh, open or cause big surgery on your penis that expose you to more risk, more damage and higher recovery time. Um, please don't hesitate if you have any questions, comments, uh, if you like the um, uh, content, hit the subscribe button and uh, the bell to get notified if I post anything new. If you need any more information, leave a comment or feel free to join me and uh, send me an email at my uh, Gmail address. Thank you for your attention and I hope that this was helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm.